Previously in our journey in chapter 11, we talked about the dissolution process and we also defined electrolytes, things that separate and don't. Continuing our journey in chapter 11, we're going to talk about solubility. And so there's the learning outcomes and expectations. Feel free to pause if you want to read through those. But yeah, section 11.3, we're going to talk about solubility. And it turns out this is a pretty big section, unlike the other ones in this chapter. Uh, so we're going to break this down into three different parts. We're going to talk about terminology, and then we'll talk about the solubility of solids as well as solubility of gases, and then the temperature and pressure dependence of those. And so, yeah, we're still going with terminology in this case, instead of talking about defining the components like we did previously, we're going to talk about the terminology that um, defines solubility of a substance in another. And so the broadest definitions of solubility or the, the most encompassing ones are talking about unsaturated versus saturated solution. And so unsaturated means it just contains less than the maximum amount and saturated means it contains the maximum amount. Like there's only so much sodium chloride you can dissolve in water. When you reach that threshold, the solution is saturated. Anything less than that is unsaturated. And so if you wanna visually depict something like that, um, a dilute solution, one that's unsaturated, means it can add more of these X's, whatever these X species are. A max concentration or a saturated solution has as many X's that can be occupied in that solution. And then if you keep adding solid X to it, no more can dissolve. Like you can't add more than this, this amount right here. And so you end up with solid on the bottom of the solution. And so both of these are saturated solution. It's just this one has a heterogeneous precipitate because no more of this solid can dissolve. And so uh, unsaturated, it's not full saturated, it's full saturated, it's full plus it has some solid on the bottom. This one is, is beyond, well, it's still saturated solution, but it has too much X in it. So you have solid dissolved or uh, sitting at the bottom. There's also a special case where you can have a super saturated solution. And this is basically a non-equilibrium condition where you've tricked the system into having more than it should in a solution. And so you can think about it as, you know, this is a saturation point. You can uh, basically have too much in solution. And it's like, if you heat it up too much and cool it down really fast, it's more, it has more in solution than it should be. Um, this is not a stable condition. It's not sustainable. And so what happens when you perturb the system is it'll actually precipitate out those solids and so here's just a quick video you take a saturated solution throw a crystal in there and a whole lot of that solid will uh, precipitate and so it's like you're you're tricking the system by controlling temperature typically to have more in solution than it can and then eventually it's going to precipitate out so that's a super saturated solution and so saturated, unsaturated, super saturated, they're not particularly quantitative, right? Like all we know is saturated is full, but we don't know what that means, how much is actually in solution. And so there's some common nomenclature we use in the sciences to describe how much goes into a solution. And so percent by mass, mole fraction, molarity, molality, these are all different ways to describe essentially the same thing. And so percent by mass, um, uh, basically you can convert between any of these as long as you have the molecular weight density and the conversion of units from grams to kilograms. All of these are describing very similar things. And so you can interconvert between them. It just depends on what you want to describe and why. And so when you talk about uh, mass percent, this is where you hear things like parts per million or parts per billion. They're typically talking about the mass of solute in grams per the mass of solution in grams. And so Massive solution is everything, that's the solvent and the solute. Uh, massive solute is just the solute. And so you're saying how much is in there, it's basically a mass fraction, right? How much is solute per total mass of the system? That gives you the percent by mass. And so yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a percentage. Mole fraction, uh, similar idea, except we're using moles instead of mass. And so moles of A per sum of moles of all component. So if you convert these grams into moles, that's what you get as a mole fraction. And we'll use this when we talk about colligative properties. Molarity down here, that's the most common one we see in chemistry and biology. It's basically moles of the solute per liters of uh, uh, the, the solution. So basically the entire volume of the solution, which is primarily dictated by the solvent. Molarity is usually what we talk about in chemistry or you, when you're making a buffer solution, molarity is the common descriptor that we use. And it's, uh, it's just a really convenient way to describe concentrations. Another one you can use is molality, which is moles per kilogram. If you only have a balance and you can't measure volumes, this is a convenient way to do it. And so 
one thing to note about this is the the one of these that is actually temperature dependent is this one molarity here and so your molarity or your concentration actually changes with temperature and it's because the volume of liquids or solutions typically changes with temperature and it's you have to do a pretty extreme temperature change for it to matter but of these like grams per grams mass percent that won't change with temperature mole fraction won't change moles per kilogram won't change but the volume of the solution will change and so there's reasons why you'd want to do each one of these but one of the major take-homes is these are describing very similar things right it's the amount of solute or amount of some component in the solution or per the entire um uh concentration and so um, yeah there's you can interconvert between them but they're all numerically ways to describe okay if something's in solution and let's say it's unsaturated what numerically how much is in there or what's the saturation threshold how much do we have in solution so we can do this graphically as well and so we have a number to describe how much is going into solution and so we can make something called a solubility curve and basically the solubility curve looks like this and so in this case we're going to do it with respect to temperature how much is going into solution per temperature and so on this x-axis is temperature on the y-axis solute per solution and this could be a bunch of different stuff but typically it's in grams per grams so we could use any of the previous descriptors of solubility on this y-axis but usually it's grams of solute per grams of solution and so the parts per million parts per billion and so there's your curve right there and one thing you'll you'll notice about this curve is this is the saturation line it basically says that's the maximum amount that can go into solution and so at any given temperature that is the most amount of in this case solubility of something per 100 kilograms of water that's the maximum amount you can get that's the saturation line and so any amount you add under that is unsaturated anything you add over that is going to be a super saturated solution and so um, this is like the, the the threshold where you can't put any more in and if you can force more in well you're gonna it's gonna precipitate out and you're gonna get to the saturation threshold and so clearly there's this relationship right between temperature and solubility right solubility goes up as temperature increases and so solubility is a temperature and pressure dependent phenomena at least with gases it's dependent on pressure and so when we talk about solubility we have to say what conditions are we talking about is it room temperature is it higher temperature is it atmospheric pressure is it different pressure and so solids and liquids that's a, it's definitely dependent on temperature but not dependent on pressure of the system because applying pressure to liquids and solids unless you go really really extreme pressures it doesn't necessarily matter gases and liquids on the other hand in addition to the temperature dependence also has an external pressure dependence and so we'll just go into each of these individually first talking about solids and liquids and we showed this graph earlier we said solubility versus temperature and here's just a bunch of examples and so depending on the nature of the components it's going to change the solubility how strongly do they want to interact with that solution how easy is it for them to dissolve and so you can look at this graph and you can look and say you know at any temperature sucrose is more soluble than NaNO3 than NaCl and so here you can see NaCl is relatively temperature independent you can only put like 40 grams of NaCl per 100 grams of water in contrast sucrose we can start at 180 grams and we can get over 200 grams of sucrose per 100 grams of water and so this solubility curve effectively tells you one how soluble things are relative to each other but also how temperature dependent they are and so you can see solubility curves they change right and so at lower temperatures NaNO3 is more soluble than KNO3 at higher temperatures KNO3 is more soluble than NaNO3 and so that information is embedded in this graph and so yeah different temperature dependence different solubilities the order of these actually reverses at 70 degrees versus zero degrees which is kind of crazy but it's dictated by how temperature sensitive are they but generally a uh, general rule is that the solubility of solids increase with increasing temperature for most solids that's going to be true all these are electrolytes all these dissolve in water um, it can get very different with different solvents but generally in water salts are going to become more soluble as you heat them up and so the more you heat up uh, your water the more um, uh, salt sodium chloride you can get in that solution but that's not always the case and so on this graph you can see okay there's several example examples where you can see solubility goes up as temperature increases right this graph is sloping upwards 
but there's a few examples where the solubility decreases with increasing temperature, which is really counterintuitive because you'd think, okay, move those molecules around more, maybe you're making it more soluble, but that's actually not the case with some things like Na2SO4, the sulfate salt, and the cerium sulfate salt. They become less soluble as the temperature increases. And it really comes down to whether they're endothermic or exothermic and how they dissolve. And we're not going to get into this in this chapter, but in chapter 13, we'll talk about Le Chatelet's principle and shifting equilibrium. But basically, if something's endothermic, it means you have to pump heat into the system to make it more soluble. If something's ex exothermic, pumping heat in the system actually makes it less soluble because heat is a product of that reaction. And so, again, like a lot of things in chemistry, the general rule is solubility of solids and liquids increases with temperature, but sometimes it doesn't. And so if it does increase, you see it on the graph here. If it decreases with increasing temperature, it's a slope going down like this. And so we have this graph about solubility. We have saturated, unsaturated, we have supersaturated. You can actually control concentrations in solution, or you can control whether it's unsaturated, saturated, supersaturated by changing the temperature or adding uh, solids to it. And so there's a few different ways you can make this solution saturated. Like one, you could cool it down, right? So if you cool down the solution, you're going to reach a threshold where your 80 grams per 100 kilograms is enough to reach the saturation threshold. And if you cool it down even further, it's going to precipitate solid because it can't contain that much material. The other thing you could do is just add material to it, right? If you add another 80 kilograms to this per 100 kilograms of water, you're going to reach up to the saturation threshold. Adding any more than 80, you go up here and you could temporarily be saturated, but eventually you'll go to here and solid will precipitate out of the solution. And so you can use both the amount of solute as well as the temperature to dictate whether it's unsaturated, saturated, and temporarily supersaturated. And so, yeah, <laughs> well, this is. You could, you could remove solvent, you could actually get rid of the water and change the concentration, but uh, that's going to depend on the amount you have in there, and you can actually change the concentration rather than the amount of solute, change the amount of solvent in the system. And so any of these three variables you can control, whether it's unsaturated, saturated, or temporarily supersaturated. All right, so that was solids and liquids. And so solids and liquids, the general rule is increasing temperature makes it more soluble. Gases actually does the opposite. And so the solubility of gases decrease with increasing temperature. And so anyone that's left their soda out in the sun or out in a room temperature knows this, right? The carbonic acid turns into CO2 and that dissipates in the atmosphere. Uh, basically, those gas molecules are allowed to escape. And so the more you heat up a solution, the easier it is for gas molecules to uh, be removed from solution. Solution. And so you can see in this temperature solubility curve, as the temperature goes up, the solubility of gases goes down. And so this is, uh, as far as I know, this is universally true. There's no examples where gases become more soluble at increasing temperature. They always become less soluble. And you can see that by this decreasing curve. So again, more kinetic energy, more gas molecules with enough energy to escape that solution and break those intermolecular forces. And those gas molecules dissipate into the atmosphere. So solids become generally become more soluble as temperature increases. Gases become less soluble as temperature increases. And so the other thing we can do to manipulate the amount of gases in solution is we can change the amount of pressure, or at least the partial pressure of the gas over the solution. And so what do I mean by that? And so we talked about vapor pressure and temperature relationships, and at equilibrium conditions, you have a certain amount of vapor pressure above a chamber. Now, one thing you can do is you can have, a, you can apply an external pressure. Like we can talk about this being a piston. We can force that piston down. And what we've effectively done is we've put more, we've kept the same amount of gas molecules, but they're in a smaller volume. And so the concentration of gas or the partial pressure of the gas is higher. And so what the system's going to do to respond is these gas molecules, some of them will at least go into solution. And so you have too many gas molecules, it's going to respond by putting some in solution and eventually reach an equilibrium condition again. And so yeah, this you can control the amount of molecules in this solution here based on the partial pressure of the gas you have above the system.
And so you could do this by controlling the piston. Alternatively, you could simply inject more gas molecules. It doesn't want these in the headspace. It's not at equilibrium. And so eventually some of these molecules will go into solution until it reaches equilibrium condition again. And so just by increasing the partial pressure, either by decreasing the volume or just adding more gas molecules, you can put more gas into solution. And this is how they carbonate beverages, doing it at higher pressure and higher concentration of gas. And so, yeah, there's the take home message. You have a partial pressure increase, the pressure of a specific gas species above the solution, the concentration of that species in solution will increase. And so even if you don't inject that gas directly into the solution, more of it will go into solution because of this relationship between partial pressure and concentration. And so the question is by how much? And so we could do the experiment again, like we did with previous examples. We're gonna systematically change one variable and measure another. In this case, we're just gonna add gas molecules to the headspace. We'll measure the partial pressure of the gas up here. We'll measure the amount of solute in the solution here. We'll graph a data point like this. And so here's the partial pressure, basically how much gas have we added up here? What's the concentration in the solution down here? We have one data point. We'll add more gas to it. We'll get another data point. We'll do that over and over again. And we get a graph that looks something like this. And so here we have partial pressure on the X axis. Here we have concentration on the Y axis. And unlike other things where you see logarithmic or exponential relationships, this one's unique in that it's a linear relationship. And so linear is awesome as we've seen before. Linear means Y equals MX plus B. In this case, B, the intercept is zero because at zero concentration or zero partial pressure, your concentration has to be zero. And so our, our equation simplifies a lot. Essentially, we have a relationship between concentration, which is Y, and partial pressure, which is X. And then we have a slope associated with this, which is K. And so this is actually known as Henry's Law. And so it's a really straightforward linear relationship between concentration and pressure, concentration and molarity. Uh, pressure is just the partial pressure of the gas. And then K is a constant for any given uh, gas solution. So it depends on the nature of those molecules. And so, um, yeah, that K constant is the basically what dictates the proportionality between the two, and that dictates the slope of this line. And so again, this is Henry's Law. It basically tells you the... The, the concentration of gas molecules in solution is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas molecule over that solution. All right, so there's our summary. We have saturated, unsaturated, super saturated solution. We have things to describe that like mole fraction, molarity, molality, uh, how much is in the solute or how much solute is in the solvent. We have solubility curves that show the, rep the relationship between solubility and temperature. We have general rules. Solids become more soluble as temperature increases, but not always. Uh, gases become less soluble as temperature increases, but, but gases become more soluble as the pressure increases, which is Henry's law. And so yeah, that covers the solubility aspect. And so next we'll dive into colligative properties.